Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and wondrous propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. We're off here to the new patch, which sees several changes, including, for example, now we apparently just start out with the Soviet perspective of a match rather than the German one. Also noting we can actually now see bulletins chosen by the players. In this case, there's a rather heavy emphasis on infantry bulletins. We, have more conscripts we can also see what they're saying in the chat, you know, chatting to each other. So, of course, for that means, you know, if you're actually saying some really bad words, I'm probably not going to bother casting you. Sorry. Just a heads up there. Anyways, conscripts on the way here for Stitchy fighting for the Soviet Union. And the 30th... 30th... 330th... Motorized Brigade, an advanced detachment send ahead to spot the way for a larger mechanized corps on a breakthrough mission. And we are seeing advanced warfare tactics, partisan tactics, and we're seeing defensive tactics versus Hagen fighting for Germany, for Deutschland. For the. Let's just say the. 7th Panzer Division right here. Points have been quickly secured, conscripts on the way. Advanced Warfare, a recent new commander, holds a bit free. Although that will probably end by well, Friday, Saturday, so if you haven't already gotten it, get it. Fjordafil. Kind of starting out here. No, actually thought, thinking about Molotov, but then deciding not. Interesting, interesting. Pushing a bit aggressively here. We're noting here Pioneers. We're noting MG42s. Numerous of them, in fact. Interesting opening here for Hagen. Not what I'd usually recommend. Also seems like, at least initially, he's actually using them. Also sandbags up here, that's a bit of rare as well. <laughs> well if you live preparing for the assault, we've seen the pioneers here. Apparently leading the way for the MG, spotting out there, and he's actually sneaking up the MG-42 from another angle by the looks of it. Perhaps looking to flank this conscript squad. That is definitely interesting, a bit bold, although could he end up badly if his opponent somehow spots him. In this case, looks like Stitchy does not. Not one step back! This is our there we go. Amplifier 2 firing into the flank. Nice work there by Hagen. Definitely a bit rare to see, but interesting, interesting. And then we're seeing the same thing here. MD42 supporting a Pioneer squad. So again, rather interesting play here from Hagen. By the way, has gone for elite troops. I'm not going to bother switching over there. And of course, elite troops itself has received some changes. The Tigrace in particular. But also troop training, stun grenades have also been sort of more early available. The Egg Infantry is also a bit early available. Same for some applies to the assault package for the conscripts. It's a bit more late available, a bit more expensive. But also grab you an additional machine gun. Conscripts think about him probably looking to flank the MG-42. Nice move there, but at the same time, of course, you're risking spotted. In the meanwhile, the MG-42 can be following there. Also noting now, troops in buildings are a bit harder to kill. The garrisoning bonuses have been slightly improved, but here we go, flanking in nicely. The assault there rather failed. We finally seem to be infantry arriving here for Hagen. MG42 continues to push back here. Pioneers for us to retreat. Wixuk Fallen! And we're seeing here a special rifle come out with a scout car on the way. The infantry, one MG42 sitting up here by the church entrance. And there we go. Cards getting shredded up point flank, but they get into the building. That was perhaps not the wise idea right there by Hagen. So then again, they can just get up in front of the church, but there's only one man that can shoot through the top window. And apparently he's a rather tall Soviet. Oh, there's a really, really, really small ceiling up there. We are ready. Other MG42 sneaking in there, setting up the flank. Clever bow play there, clever bow play, getting into the church again, getting glassed out from several sides. <laughs> That's hardly the best position you want to be in. And in fact, we see here that Stitchy might be in a bit of trouble. Also getting a sharp shot. Oh, that wasn't a burst of starts there. Shot down the street. Bit aggressively bowed, a bit reckless perhaps by Hagen. But Scott comes up. Flame for engineers in. A rather classic move there. He's going to replace those infantry losses. And also, partisans and defensive tactics. Bit of an interesting mix here. Certainly a bit of alien to set for both doctrines if he so fancies. Scout car charge in straight against the MD42. You have to be careful about leaving the MD42 it's about like that when there's a scout car round. You can easily risk losing them like that. With the 50 caliber raking into them and flame for spurning them alive. Gonna do so finally looking to arrive. 30 caliber now raking and flame first joining in. Can they gonna get off a of Panzer Faust? There we go. Nice Panzer Faust hit there. 
And quickly retreating, interesting enough, right there looks like Kagan is perhaps a bit worried. And we're also noting two more gun discords over here, one with the lightest machine and gear there. Ready. Soldiers ready. It is Scout car falling back, troops in enforcing, bunker up. Rather interesting build order so far from Hagen. Three Grenadiers, two Pioneers, and two MGs. Certainly gives him quite a bit of a field presence, in particular after he got that one country forward. I mean, we're seeing a lot less units out here for Stitchy. And Titan Grenades up, he's probably expecting some kind of vehicular hoo ha from Hagen. So for a bit quiet across the front line. Scout coupling back here. Not looking too good there for the M3A1. Mine's going up there, but might get spotted. There we go. Boris took a hit. And he's advancing up here. Needs to be a bit careful, careful, careful. Get some snipers nearby support, in fact, and sniping straight into the back of Friedrich. You need to well there. Careful about the mines. Careful, careful. Meaning mine sweepers. There we go. Three Fritzes dead in the snow. In a large puff of snow, in fact. Seems like he's not paying attention to the sniper, bit reckless, bit reckless. Conscious of killing the sense of victory, point and some pioneers moving up the west route. And this bunker's not been upgraded yet. And the Glenys seem to be trying to hunt down the snipers, so they need to be rather careful about that. Scarka still making its way back, Conscious holding up here by the fuel point, as going to be some MGs and sniper pioneers from in there. Oh, roll the infantry actually is scored in the MG, though, in a pretty terrible state, a bit depleted. At the same time, Pioneers with another MG42 moving up the center, and looks like the Gunners here are falling back, having had enough trying to hunt down those damnable snipers. There we go, conscripts getting rushed. Nothing to go there, that scout car will make repairs. We are seeing the engineers rapidly moving up to do exactly that. Ears are frozen. Did you want something? But those Soviet, Soviet advanced attachments were usually meant to sort of, you know, sort of like a scouting attachment, but the Soviets had a sort of different ideas on reconnaissance. They were more about, you know, finding the weak spots and then basically getting stuck in there so the rest of the army could sort of follow up and exploit. To a certain extent, you know, the German soldiers did that, but that's not really the primary purpose. The Soviets sort of more went for that. And in particular for the sort of so it's got scout detachment that rotor as vehicles, something like that again, I'm less strong on that. Admittedly. But generally about you know securing bridges and otherwise you know weak spot in the German lines with as much firepower as they could muster, and then wait for the rest of the army to sort of fully exploit that gap they created. But it is they will need to fall back. So looks of fun. Not looking good here, the left flank is weak, and we are seeing here that stitch is pulling pretty hard. Retreat, retreat! Scheiße. You want the sniper? Medic Punk is up though, but he needs to fall back here. This is not a good position. Gunner needs to retreat, retreat. <laughs> Scheiße. Why aren't you falling back, Hagen? Nine. And there we go. Dead. That was definitely a bit of a waste. Can't go flanking around there. I mean, currently Hagen's front line is awfully overextended. I can't help but feel. And apparently he actually had four gun in the squad, so rather heavy tier one versus also a pretty heavy conscript presence now from Stitchy as well. Plenty of conscripts up for him. Also, no, he has gone for advanced warfare. Not sure what's called that. We see some machine guns, intercepts, we're seeing repair kits. The new T-45 call in, which basically calls in a single T-3485. Of course, for the chief, and we also get a single strafing run here from the Sturmovic at only 90 munitions and 10 command points. There we go, big caught out in the open, need to be careful there, Hagen. Though, of course, he's trying to sort of hold up in the shrubbery. Overall, the Grenadiers managed to force the conscripts out there of the church. Conscripts playing in from behind, coming under heavy fire there as they get out in the open. Getting straight there by the MD42, punishing with the camera there, rather not cutting it in the longer run. We need to retreat. And there we go, Gewehr for the freeze up, the Jäger upgrade. Quite a bit of firepower there on the gun it is then. German Tem Artemis rifles. Oh, we might see there another bit too slow retreat there. Perhaps the amount of firepower came a bit as a surprise. Sniper moving up there to provide support here. Need to get away, get away. Wuxuk. Both MG forging up there, come on, gun it is. 
And he got another squad here. Maybe that was why. But still, you need to be careful. Also, quite a bit of manpower fuel him. He needs to be floated here by Stitchy. He needs to look into that. Another scout car pushing in aggressively. And no, not really a lot of replays I had here, sadly. Again, so hardly going to be high level play, though. Not quite novice, but still. Come on, Stitchy, don't float. Nice use there for overdrive, and overall good use of the scout car. Oh, another conscript squad. Wow. Looks like this case was active rifle grenade, but wasn't quite paying attention. Come on, replace those losses. And there we go, using that huge manpower. Another Canadian squad wiped out, looking a bit brutal here. Support armor core finally going up. I mean, considering he had no lag from the guys, should have been faster with that. I mean, in theory, Stitcher could have rushed for armor and hit him with that. But over to Hagen, who's now lost quite a bit of infantry again. I mean, there are some rather heavy losses on both sides in this fight. Scout car falling back to secure. More conscripts arriving. So far, no submachine guns being equipped we for them. The I mean, the upgrade is actually now a bit more expensive. It costs 30 munitions, which is something, though you now actually also get three submachine guns rather than just two. There we go. Panzer come back and feet on the way here for Hagen or Hagen or whatever. Yes. MG element ready. Ready. Oops, are advancing. So now we just need to be careful. In particular, with the Jaeger upgrade, if Grenadiers is moving in. Those snipers quickly falling back in the face of such firepower. And there we go. Machine gun upgrade. And. One, two, three. Submachine guns now. Definitely more firepower now in their hands. Panzer for almost ready. He will need some more infantry as well to replace some of all those losses. Maybe for two cuts down to set up. Scout car falling back here, a bit worried. Well, any escort. Pioneer is forced to fall back as conscripts push up the center. Uh, Panzer Fear is ready for battle. There you go, the Panzer Kampang Fear arrives. He could use a bit of troop training, though, note his axe has been made expensive, so it's less, as it goes, efficient. It looks like there'll be none of that from Hagen. None of that. MG42 coming at Conscript moving in, larger force, MG42 setting up as well. Conscript getting shredded and murdered on this road. Look at that stock right there. Other Conscript moving up, I want to stop that as well. MG42 slowly turns, Panda 4 moving in as well. Conscript there getting stopped, just barely. And he's gaining veterans, increasing the accuracy. Panda 4 moving in, and oh, it hits a mine! That's definitely not the best start there on their pantering. Conscripts here getting not much out of it. Head on assault proved to be rather lethal, lacking Molotovs, in fact. The Gunners and the MD40 here were able to get the upper hand, expending quite a few lives then. Well, achieving only one German dead. No son of Strafnik, and it looks like Stitch is basically trying to play for some T-3045s. Of course, the new call-in, allowing him to sort of call them in singularly, and thus considerably cheaper. Although, I mean, actually, the call-in with the two of them is actually sort of economically cheaper in some regards, you know, than, you know, this because calling in two of the other ones is cost actually more than calling in the two at the same time. A little fun fact there. By the way, going for the fuel point again. Snipers up near the Grenadiers. Another Ghanaian squad, in fact, looks like he's getting this a lot more infantry here to help. The 7th Panzer DB Sean, Panzer for the repairs. Veterans run for these snipers. What is he doing? What is he doing? Looks like he's, in fact, utterly falling back in the face of the sniper. Shifting back a bit here. I mean, he's leaving his support weapons perhaps a bit too unguarded. And there we go. He's there actually used go. troop training. Also noted, actually, he has a bit more of a cooldown now. And he's also heavily equipping this squad. He's pretty much just training them and then getting them everything they need. Yeah. And there we go, using overdrive to basically ensure they can't easily escape. Rather vicious use of the ability. Definitely makes it hard to escape as the Germans. Having a bit of trouble there on the ice. It's slippery, comrades. Careful. Careful. What does that mean, buddies? 
This is the Soviet army. We don't do care for. There we go. One elite grenadier squad. Also, one hell of an investment right there for Hagen. I mean, that's a lot of weapons, a lot of resources plunked down into one unit. 120 munitions. Quite a bit of manpower and fuel. Not what I call nothing. Panzer 4, the ready to want to advance and find, do something. Can't look slowly enveloping here, the grenadiers. MG 2 getting recruited. There you go, coming under engagement here with the conscripts. Charging in, firing in machine guns, crushing the sandbags. Conscripts here having a trouble there versus the elite grenadiers, just taking heavy casualties. Escavier 43s and MG 42s do terrible, terrible things here. Conscripts not having much luck up here either. Panzer 4 with machine guns and high explosive shells. Finishing them off, the gun is down here. They will need to retreat soon. MG 42 moving up support. And more support moving into the south. MD42 and Grenadiers arriving there. Panzer 4 holding up well. Conscripts, on the other hand, not doing too well out in the bloody open. And there we go, we're seeing the CTC overall losing, but again, another charge. Oh, he might get the Grenadiers! That's your two by way for the flame range. I mean, he can get that Grenadiers squad, that would be huge. I mean, that would pretty much be turning that huge resource investment into nothing, but looks like Lady Luck did not fate for him this time around. Are securing our territory. Not this time around. Could get another Panzer IV now. In fact, he is getting another Panzer Kampang for here. No further sign of building up. It really looks like he's Without really building up for the T-3485s. I mean, it's going to be harder now. I mean, previously, again, with the T-3485s, I mean, you only need some command points for you to make, you know, you could sort of, you know, hold on reasonably well, you know quickly get some tanks reasonably quickly but now of course Jack's held on much longer I mean we're looking in close to get 20 minutes he's still not got any armor I mean the only reason he you know has held on so well is because that one mine pretty much meant you know it took ages to get repaired because you know it didn't get both pioneers on the job but now of course things are turning so he's rather going to need that tank right soon otherwise he's going to be in a lot of trouble because that panzer was really going to turn his conscripts into mush in that regard, you know, Stitch has been holding up well. Now, of course, another problem appears, which of course is all of those Gewehr for the fleece and light machine guns. It's overall a lot of firepower he can array towards the conscripts. And that rather means the Grenadiers now really have the advantage in infantry to infantry combat unless the conscripts basically manage to surprise the Grenadiers up close and do terrible, terrible things. Still keeping up the pressure, harassing, snapping away. Panis with mines, was out there go. Second Panzer Kampf flying fear out there for the seventh Panzer Division. MG42 sitting up, Conscript. Oh, running straight into the MG42. Oh, just horrible. They're just target practice for the fascists. Target eliminated. Target eliminated. Panzer 4 charging in there. He can't hold on for much longer. He's being pushed back across the front. Though he's got plenty of conscripts, but still, even that can't really last for that long. Conscripts here, fighting a desperate fight and ultimately forced way here by the Grenadier. Deutschland's finest. Panda Fall there, getting off one hell of a hit there, blasting away all machine guns. Fire fly. Need to fall a bit back, need to fall a bit back. Getting a lot more pioneers now, it seems he's lost one squad, but apparently he now wants to be able to properly repair his panzers. Good thinking there from Hagen. Scout guy here about to run into one hell of a surprise, but it's not careful. Here comes Going for the victory points, keeping up the pressure there, good, good. And looks like he might be able to get now. I mean, we see nine command points here for Hagen, so his opponent shouldn't be able to be close to that as well. With some slight variations on difference. Pioneers ready for anything! Looks like he's giving his Panzer forces a mobile reserve in different places, and there we go. First T-3045 here's right to sort of help the advanced detachment. So now you need to be careful, sort going in here. Scout car supporting a conscript push. And the T-3045 looks to be supporting the Western push and sort of punish the fascists there. Going in, so getting actually overwhelmed here. Lots of fire from the 30 cal, but also the conscripts moving up. Then these need to fall back, so looks are fine. Panzer 4 turning the tight there. 
T-34-45 reveals its presence, getting off some nice kills down the gun near, they need to retreat. He could end up losing that squad. Bit fortunate there, Scout cut turning the tide here, Panzer 4 needs to react, in fact Panzer 4 will roll, need to react to what's going on here, does he choose the T-3045 or does he choose the Scout cut to stop? But he needs to make a choice right now. There we go, Scout cut stopped here by Gunny Position. He's really double upgrading everything as much as possible. Panzer 45 here holding on without any support. Panzer 4 moving in. Where is the other one? He can easily flank there. And combat engineers here taking heavy losses. Forced away. And oh, mine went off there. Getting half the squad. Splendid. Come on, move those damn panzers. Interesting enough, there's been no sign of stun grenades though from Hagen, which is a bit, I suppose, sad. Our opponents are seizing the No response in the form of Panzer so far to this again. He's got two Panzer forces, his opponent doesn't. But back to Stitch, he has gotten himself another T-3045. He's also got the Stormix flaming run ready. Panzer 4 fails to penetrate. Come on, where's the other Panzer 4? Get moving, Hagen. Why did you not coordinate your tanks properly? And there we go. And he's definitely seen the Stitch, he's calling his T-3045s. Panzer 4 here's about to get overwhelmed. Popping smoke, good. Where's the other Panzer 4? Come on. Veterans one up, he could blitz, he could blitz. Looks like both tanks failed to miss, hit this time around. And we're seeing a quick follow-up with a strafing run here. Which is, by the way, nerfs, so it doesn't kill everything in one go. Can do damage, but not quite as viciously. There we go. They took damage, but not like Panzer 4 here. They're dealing with two 225 and 5s on its own. Need to get out of there. Not a good situation. The T-3045 is overall more durable than the Panzer 4. He's moving in the other damage Panzer 4 as well. Both T-3045s need to get out of there, holding up, backing the way for a German infantry position. Both Panzer IVs falling back, we are all seeing this arm and engagement, you know, really didn't go either way as such. Also note, a lot of conscript squads were now building a lot of comm engines. The note, again, another note, is you know that with conscript repair kits you can also utilise as conscripts to repair the T-3045s, though either way you should get repairing them. Oh, pretty soon. Scout currency in repairs. Can't do fine, but they're not doing too well. They probably should attack the several squads at one time. I mean, a veteran fleet in his squad with that many fire weapons is basically not going to be a match for the conscripts. There we go, another squad wiped out. He needs to be careful now. He's rather extending already depleted units. He needs to begin falling back for the time being, reorganize, and then focus on the T-3045s, which are probably one of his better chances at the moment, really, you know, dealing some serious damage. Panzer Force resuming the has no goat. Numerous pioneer squads working on the Panzer Force, ensuring they quickly get repaired. Come on, get all engineers to work on it. All of them, including the veterinary too, which could repair faster. Why isn't he using that on that instead? That's definitely a bit of a massive mistake there, in fact, from him, I would say. Third Panzer campaign out there for Hagen. Why, why aren't you repairing? What are you thinking, Stitchy? Soldiers ready. There we go, might have been a misclick. air support is available. He definitely should have used those conscripts to repair those T-3045s. So we could actually have gotten back into the fight quicker. And instead we see here that thanks to proper repair techniques here from Hagen, he's actually able to get all of so both Panzer Force back in the fight really quick, plus he's got another one now added on top of that. So that rather leaves the advantage to him. Stitch, he needs to regain the initiative rather quickly. 
It looks like he might be aiming for another T-34-85 to support his efforts. There we go, he's getting another sniper as well, it seems to replace the ones lost. Yes, comrade. Replacements have arrived. Panzer Fear is ready for battle. He's getting four Panzer Fours. Good lord. The enemy is encroaching on our territory. He's definitely had most of the map you can feel for now some time. And there he goes, charging straight into this line. Can't get you running into some rather heavy fire. Get out of there. That was just a wasted assault. A waste of a conscript squad. Can't be getting caught out here in the open. Again, not a good idea. He needs to be more careful with them now. A lot of reckless assaults going in again. I know this is not the highest level of play, but you know, I ha don't have any replays of that. Because again, the patch just came out, you know what, six hours ago at this stage. When I'm recording this. I think I have snow in so my So there's a bit of a problem there. Again, as I always say, you know, when you know there's a patch out, kindly send in some replays. Otherwise, there's nothing much I can do. As I did not have any luck in getting some worthy replays myself, I'm afraid. Panzer IV setting up. Charge is ready, and veterans in three combat engineers, veterans in two scout car, panther fast men off their panther force advancing. T 35s are finally ready, get them moving, but again, you know, Stitchy could have had the mark match fast, and these cars need to get out of it. Oh, he's losing the squads quickly. Oh dear, oh dear, what are you thinking, Stitchy? Preserve your men. Just insane laws is right there. Combat engineers need to retreat as well. T-35 move up, retreat the, retreat the engineers, retreat the engineers, why? Oh, for heaven's sake, Stitchy. Panzer Falls though getting blasted here. He's not getting all of them up, by the way. Which actually means the T-35 for some time actually have the advantage since they're active quick conflict fire in a smaller spot. Veterans on this Panzer come back and fear needs to be pulled back for repairs though. And these are getting blasted on the ice. Close to getting wiped out, and uh, Hagen needs to retreat, and there you go, he's actually ramming the T-45s! Oh, and ramming again! Another one got a main gun destroyed there! So all of his tanks have, except one has got a damaged main gun, and this one though does have better front armor. But it's already damaged! It doesn't matter if the T-45 is penetrating, I mean, two more penetrating shots and he'll one and then got one more shot. Well, as the Panzer was actually a bit of trouble there with the front arm of the T-3045. And the T-3045 has better health, and there we go. Kaput. And now there's two veteran Panzers for it to sort of gain veterans to your ball. It's very likely to reach veteran, you two will get very close to it, but again, need to replace with losses. Stitchy definitely needs to get its bloody act together and replace the ball. actually time for the mid-game analysis. Concentration is rather unfortunate both sides both players suffering heavy losses a bit problems with unit preservation but again Stitcher really needs to get his act together he's wasting too many conscripts way too quickly like that that's definitely one problem but overall I mean the tanks on the other hand are somewhat swinging his favor he could probably even pull that one together Panzer Falls here sort of trying to get away at least the ones that can interesting enough he hasn't tried pulling them back actually which is a bit odd and there you go, I mean, three wrecked Panzer IVs, not looking too good. Then again, this T-45 could reach Veteran T-2, which would make it even more lethal with a higher rate of fire. Overall, the situation is looking at Grim Infantry, not looking too good, although, again, Hagen does possess a larger quantity of it at the moment. And again, I mean, currently, Stachy needs to get it together, get troops together, and get, begin pushing back, because he's behind on victory points. He's behind a lot of things. In terms of damage, Hagen, though, is also clearly leading. Kill-wise, he's also clearly leading. I mean, there's definitely lots of sort of work on there for Stitchy. Let's return to the fight here. 
not hard to get to some point. Now for Haken, I mean, you know, try, you know, to be a bit more careful with your tanks and pull back. You actually see tanks trying to ram you. Also, you need to get that T-35 repaired quickly. Strafing around ready as well. There you go, one Panther fall down. The other one now trying to escape again. Hagen here just too slow. That's going to get blasted. And there you go, veteran to increasing the rate of fire. There we go. We could try and get that Panther 4 actually. I might even be able to get it. Oh, wait, see, the main gun's put together now. That was interesting actually. It usually doesn't go together that fast because it isn't fully repaired. And there he goes, draping out cold, he needs to pull back the troops! Fresh conscripts have arrived. Panzer pass went off, then the T-45 forcing that back. Yes, comrade. This one almost ready again. All units are here. And there we go. Also close to Vetchini 2, by the way. Another sniper. I don't think he should be getting so much snipers. He needs more infantry to push ahead with. Another Panzer IV looks like Hagen here is fond of the Panzer IVs, but he needs to stop blobbing up now. <laughs> Spread out a bit. Engineers ready for assignment. Another engineer squad. Standing by. He's at least got one fuel point back, that's something. Tanks are not T-34, crude loaded and ready. Ah, there you go, Panther 4 gets off a nice hit. Panther 4 in return fails to penetrate. Get the other one up, come on, Stitchy. Up, up, four bats. There you go. Both T 3045s, by the way, now with Vet 2 increasing their rate of fire considerably. Ensuring they fly faster than a Panther 4. Then he is there getting bombarded. And that's just a lethal volley being unleashed for the gun easily to retreat. Hagen there again displaying a bit of sketchy unit preservation as well. Mine went off down there, it seems. There you go, sector. finally utilizing his concept to repair as well. Oh, Royal, I mean, he's otherwise you know, pretty much made use of every ability in his doctrine compared to, I think, you know, him who's still you not know, used to stun grenades or anything else. Oh, oh, snipers went down there again. Be careful with your snipers like that. Then he is forced to fall out of the house there as the T-45s bombarded it. Another strafing line sort of follow up here and things. We're seeing the Panzer Force rolling back as well. Getting another sniper, not more infantry. Getting close to him, just calling another T-3045 by the way. Coordinate them, coordinate them, don't roll in one at the two T Panzer Force at the same time. That's only going to give the advantage to the Panzer Force. There we go. Veteran D2, he's splitting in ahead, but without the Panzer Force following up. There's a bit of problem here with armor coordination by the two players, you can see. There you go, one Panzer IV kaput. Again, another Veteran D2 Panzer wasted. Hagen definitely needs to work on, you know, preserving his pants. I mean, he's doing alright damage with them, but he's not very good, you know, keeping them alive, and... Oh dear, looks like he wasn't paying attention on this C-34X. He escaped, close to Veteran D3. Oh, never mind, why Panzer Faust? And that was good to snuck. This one, though, is also getting reasonably close, which again would increase rate of fire. I mean, he's actually going to fire rather rapidly, but also make it more maneuverable. Moving up, there's a few down grenadiers. This now belongs to the people and workers. They're so far having a hard time getting a kill. There we go. 
One remaining Panzer for the time being, again, he's advancing. Hagen utilizing his large infantry force. There we go. T-35 is leaving once more. Sniper's opening up. Gunny, be careful. Getting up there with a the Panzer Faust. There we go, the retreat has begun, the Panzer IV moves in. Perhaps the Swing can't get a kill, though already now. T-35 would have the advantage, team with a bit of damage. It still has more, oh, never mind then. Down to half health now, but there we go. Still has a higher rate of fire than the Panzer IV, I believe. Other T-35 arriving. No, no, why are you ramming right there? You had an almost workable T-35 and he needs to ram it. It's a bit pointless, also noting here, and I think it's back to Hagen. We are seeing the heavy panzer go up there. Another panzer fall down, and we're seeing Vetch and on this T-3045. Needs to get those repaired. Sturmgeschutz. Lots of mines, we just taking no chances. Good, good. Enemy is here, so much Awaiting order! Gonna going to get off a panther after getting a bit reckless. Dead. You need something built? A blown up? Why are you retreating? Why are you retreating? That made no sense. The enemy oh well. Taking our territory. But rather looking like game old, so the new Tiger is available, costs 800 manpower now. You lose, well, some of your manpower income and you lose almost all of your fuel income, by the way. So there we go. On the other hand, it's basically a veteran 3 Tiger with target weak point, Panzer Tactician. Plus, you actually get munitions to use those abilities continually, so it's actually, in some regards, you know, more powerful. But at the same time, it can also be sort of more reasonably stopped by a solid opponent. I mean, this is something more I would imagine it's Tigris being, you know, more about the skills rather than just, you know, doing twice as much damage and taking a lot of this damage. Needs to be careful with it, though. Anti tank grenade off there, that was a bit silly. You probably could have dealt with those. T-35, 85 though, is pretty much kaput. Pioneers need to get there, but they're being dealt with by the conscripts here blocking their path. And we're finally getting this one repaired. This last real chance here would seem for Stitchy. I mean, it's actually recently rare to see a bit of T-35, so again, I'd rather rank this as intermediate play. If that to say something about it. They're being secured. It's done. Pioneers caught. Pioneers infantry contact. Sniper there on the run. Machine guns raking up the ground behind him. There we go. Gunners setting up an ambush position. Having to catch the blight, and there we go. Schwein is dead. Tot nicht mehr. So we're seeing some schwerer Panzer Abteilung AC at the front line with this veteran crew, or well, elite crew, I suppose. Enemy T-35 moves advance here. First of the Grenadiers. Tigers might move in. Or not. There we go, forced away. He needs to be careful, there we go. He could try and get off a target weak point. Yeah, blitz in and go for target weak point. That's getting a chance to really knock it out permanently, but looks like Hagen is being a bit cautious. Okay, sniper's forcing the commander to peek his head in. A lot of tank commanders, or a bunch of them, were actually lost in this way, you know, basically peeking out and then a sharpshooter takes them out. So let's 
fun fact there. Though, of course, in the game here, it rather means anything. It could be an interesting thing. T-35 moves away, Tiger is pulling back in the serve. I mean, he's not really getting a lot of fuel. I mean, it's not something you can sort of utilize. I mean, basically, had some fuel. I suppose we're trying to support with a planter. T-35 moves in here, opening up, firing away. And again, nope, the high rate of fire. And now it's really new. Lay down a much more deadly volume. Tom is moving straight into the machine gun here. And, well, the machine gun's actually doing quite a bit more damage than the regular Tiger, I believe. Tiger is out of the way, doing a lot of damage, slowly moving ahead. Overall, though, I have to say again, the snipes at this stage, I mean, a bit of waste of resources. Usually, got more infantry, got some fuel casualties or something. I mean, Jenny, I mean, if you are going for something like that, what Stitch was doing, I mean, you want fuel caches, really. I mean, you're going to go for something like this, you get fuel caches out of must. You can sort of bring it, get them out, and also less dependent on map control. Tiger is doing all right. Tiger is stitchy. Can't get running straight into some elite kind of dealer. More gun is arriving, going for the victory points, not looking good there. No response to what's going over here. Come on, Hagen. Do your best for Germany. We are losing territory. Overall though, I would say I mean we're probably going to see a lot more of Advanced Warfare, again, it's in many regards a rather strong commander. And so any very, you know, well-rounded one. Stitchy stop needs, needs to stop floating manpower again, you know, if he needs, you know, tanks, they've got peace for that, get some fuel caches instead. Fuel caches do a lot for you. And this with MG4 just walk down to the final fuel point. Troops are getting caught on the ice. Taking nasty losses there to the Tiger crew. There goes snipers almost wiped out. T-35 also holding back by the looks of it. Can't their fourth away. Taking heavy, heavy losses. But the T-35 here rolls back in, trying to get some kills. Surprised he hasn't been more aggressive with it. Again, it's quite maneuverable. Again, can do a bit of damage. But there we go. Soviet air support going in. Quick strafing run. Got them, the Gandhi's forcing them away. And overall, with the new one, you actually have a chance of actually retreating away from where previously, I mean, you were likely going to lose a squad no matter what. We must hold the enemy. We are down to our last 25 points. Another team 45 finally available for him, if he so wants it. And there we go. Tie Grace, spot to T-3045. Gets off a nice hit there, T-34 on the other hand, misses. Target weak point again, the quickly a nice use there, us. Hagen. We have only ten points remaining. Another miss, and trying to ram. And in this case, managed to shock, and there we go, ran out of victory points. Game over, a loss for the Soviet Union. A victory for Germany, albeit with one with heavy armoured losses. Following the end, the Germans were able to hold the 7th Panzer Division were victorious. Again, not high level play, but I wouldn't call it novice play either. I mean, it was, you know, a complete waste of units or roll against it. He clearly has some problems in retreating at times. Again, he does also display the ability to actually do so, but again, there are some problems here and there. Getting his troops into slightly less good conditions and perhaps, you know, not entirely thinking about retreat paths, which again is sort of more intermediate play. It's sort of there where you're sort of, you know, trying to sort of build up your strategies and then your sort of, and tactics, but you're not quite there sort of properly setting them together. So there's sort of flashes of, oh, good idea there, and then, you know, you don't quite fully think it through. I mean, good play for here, for example, again, would have been fuel caches, sort of fully get the most out of this kind of play he was going for. I mean, again, it was, you know, relying on one building, conscripts, and T-3045s. I mean, he should have had fuel caches. 
for it, or he should have defended harder around those few points. Neither really happened again, the ultimate, you know, as soon as he'd rather run out of steam there, I mean, he was, you know, well, pretty much tr in trouble. So definitely some problems there. Hagen as well also had some mistakes. I mean, there were some interesting tactics. Again, Pioneer supported by MG42s. But again, in some problems, there were some issues with unit preservation as the game went on. But overall, not too bad. He could have done a bit more of this doctor. I think, you know, actually utilized stun grenades, I think. But all he actually utilized, well, pretty much everything else. And of course, we got the new Tiger race, which is considerably less durable. And also less likely to two-shot a tank. But again, it's got some other nifty little features, but... Definitely much more manageable now in several regards, also less likely to utterly cripple your economy, which is also great. One thing though, you could have considered were actually some mines, also including the new cheaper S mines. Yes, cheaper S mines, thank the heavens. So that's something there, but again, you know, for Stitchy, careful in ramming and, you know, utilize your units a bit better, I think. I mean, again, over here with the T-34 and the other one, he didn't really need to ram that Panzer for that just resulted in the loss of a T-34-85. So some things there for him to consider in the fight. Overall, though, I hope you enjoyed this fight again. Not high-level play. Not high-level play. This is really the best I could offer because I practically got nothing. And certainly also nothing is not really interesting. So I sort of went for one, you know, displayed some of the new stuff again. The T-3045 single call-in. And in fact, we got one here. Veteran 3 T-3045 again. Normus wouldn't have been able to get a T-3485 up to Veteran G3. Also, we got the new Tiger Race, we got troop training, sort of also a new version, and some other things overall, you know, more of a showcase. But hopefully you enjoyed this, hopefully you've got some new ideas for how to play the game, hopefully you've inspired to try some new things out. If you were, why not subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone, if not, you know, send in a replay on, provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers, and see you tomorrow.